Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your hosts, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. So, <clears throat> I'm a reader. Readers are leaders. Leaders are readers. <laughs> I love it. I love it. They are. Um, sure. You know Jim Collins. I do know Jim Collins. Yep. And we briefly touched on this, but I want to mm-hmm. go in more uh, detail. So he did good to great. And one of his concepts were the flywheel, right? So your business is a flywheel, a giant flywheel with handles, right? And it's very hard to get going, you know, very difficult. But once you get going, it can, you know, it starts spinning and you can have multiple people spinning the flywheel, right? So he had this book. It's a little pamphlet. It's like 10 bucks. You can buy it and it just expands on this concept. So I want everyone to think. What is your business flywheel? And I'll give you an example. Give it to us. The first one is Amazon, right? So what did they start out in? A garage. Yeah, books (laughs) in a garage. (laughs) But yeah, books, yep. But their whole... So I read the Amazon book. He was obsessed with having massive selection. Like every book, like he even told it like in the first five years, he's like, I want every single book. In the world. Yep. His team had to convince him like the last 4% is like a billion dollars of wasted money. <laughs> and he finally said, okay, we don't have to get the last 2%, but I want you know everything yeah. but then, right? So they have great selection. That was one key, right? Um, the second is he goes, okay, we have to have a low cost because we have to compete you know, with these other booksellers. And if you have great selection, if you have a lot of selections and a lot of people competing, like you're almost naturally going to somehow get low cost, right? Not always. And then his third insight is convenience. And that's why he's always pushing like prime two day. Like he wants prime to be within hours. Right. So like those big three things. So like you push those flywheel and they help turn. Right. And what do those help turn? Right. More customers and more traffic. Right. Customers and traffic. Right? Yep. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. And what's great about the flywheel concept is it comes full circle. OK. Once you have more customers, more traffic, what are you going to get from that? More sellers are going to want to put more of their stuff on. So you have more selection. You have lower costs and you have more convenience. So like it, like it spins on. It keeps going. Yeah. You're sort of creating like a perpetual energy system, but it is for your business. Exactly. Exactly. So I have one for F9. It's not perfect. Oh, here we go. Because, uh, but I want other people to think about it too. Do you want to not look and maybe think of your own F9 or you want me to? No, I'm good. I'm just, I'm good. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people start, this is no, um, I'm stealing from different things, but you have to have great people, right? And uh, that, you got to have a good staff, right? Great and, staff, actually. And that's why good. we were friends in, in college and then started a firm. Because we're like, oh, he's good at architecture. I'm amazing at architecture. I was going to say excellent. <laughs> I was going to, for myself, outstanding. I'm excellent and amazing, <laughs> right? And one of our big things that we did from the beginning was like training and our template, and we always thought, and then we had building experience. So like training and building, training and building, because then we can get closer to the problem. So great people, training and building so that we can f- provide value for our clients, right? So if we can do that, then our clients can give us referrals, right? And then we can get bigger, better, more impactful projects. Once we get bigger, more impactful projects, what can we do? Hire better people, hire great people, train them, build them. Get more, you know, like going it back keeps going. and, and each one of those points, just like each one of the Amazon points, there's processes behind it that help it. You right? know what but I that's would, that's our, yep. what, I what I, here's what I would add to it. I would add spokes to it and the spokes, they are spokes that, yep. And the go. spokes are, the spokes are states. In states. other words, Hey, we're doing stuff in Colorado. Great. Maybe Texas soon. Maybe Alabama soon. Mm. We are licensed in Idaho. We are licensed in North Dakota. Yep. It's it's like the Norman Foster approach, right? If anybody's ever watched, everybody should watch. How much? Go to Amazon if you have Amazon Prime, and watch how much does your building weigh, uh, Mister Foster? It is a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal uh, documentary, and one of the best things that I love about that. We we show it every 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 semester in the, in the one class that we teach at CU right now. Uh, <clears throat> but what the best part about it that I like is that he he. He understood after going through, I think, two big recessions 
where he was like, I'm not doing this again. I'm not, you know, almost going bankrupt, all this stress, laying off all these people. He's like, I need to go international. I'm going to be all over the world. Therefore, if Asia goes down, then most of my work is going to be in America and or and or South America or whatever. Right. Yep. That's been our approach with volume with volume based architecture. Right. Where we're doing like we're, we're, we're always medium to maybe medium high as far as prices, but we're never the highest. We're never the lowest. And, and then if it, and then couple that with with efficiency, well, all of a sudden you start to branch out. That's that's our next idea is to to branch out and be go and 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 do business in in a bunch of different places. You have this diversity aspect to your pro, to your to your business. Yep. Don't put but, all your eggs in one basket. Everybody knows that. Cool, cool. So, uh, again, with this flywheel, if you're getting clients, what are some of the nuances that you can do? What are some of the nuances you can do? What do you mean? Feeling out a new client. Oh, oh, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I've had some really, I've been like, uh, the amount of inquiries that, that have been coming through my email box and my phone call, my phone number. Staggering. And it's been awesome. It's been awesome. So what's really interesting is another good reminder to me is how important it is to feel out all of these clients that you have. Uh, that in a meeting, right? Like you, you're every time I go into a meeting, it's like, okay, what is the personality of this client, and how do I become sort of a chameleon and com- like morph into into getting along with them, relate, relate, relate. Yeah, exactly. How do I relate to them? That's the better way to th- think about this. Yeah, how do I relate to them? How can we connect? There's always some kind of personal thing that I try to have a, 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 a some kind of connection with them. Well, I met a client yesterday who was literally Bill Burr. You know what I mean? Bill Burr, the ah, comedian. Yeah. I mean, it was like hysterical. So I go up I go up, and I'm driving up uh, this canyon in Boulder, outside of Boulder. And it's a very – I end up driving – I was driving your truck. So mm-hmm. this giant truck, uh, a, a Chevy, like a three-quarter ton. Three, it's just huge. Uh, really, really wide. And so I'm going up these narrow roads, these switchbacks. <laughs> and I come back, and I come down, and I go in. I'm like, oh, that's their house. It is a one lane, I'm not joking, maybe like eight foot wide lane. Which is as wide as my truck. Exactly. No, it really, it really was. Yeah. And I drive down it and, and, and then the, I park and the client comes out and he gives me this really weird look. Like I've been accused of this too and so is my son of like, why do you guys look angry? We're not angry, we're just thinking. Yeah, like <laughs> we, we, we get this expression on our face, right? So I think he was doing the same thing. He was, he was trying to digest like, what the hell is this truck? Doing uh, what? Yeah. What is this giant truck doing? Yep, because an architect's supposed to be coming. An architect is supposed to be coming. Yeah, what architect drives a giant truck? Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot do, but you know, you get the point. I mean, this this truck is like oil field redneck. Let's yeah. just say it. Okay, <laughs> it literally looks like that, yep. and that's where Alex lives, anyways, and is in oil country. Yeah. But but I mean, people might be questioning why do you have a big truck? What have you been using it for? Construction waste, literally, because- and literally in the back is a bunch of construction waste. After that, I went to the job site, then went to the freaking dump and actually dumped it. Right, <laughs> so construction waste when you met the client. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm uh, I'm using your topper, so oh, nobody okay. can they see it, see. right? Yeah, I'm not I'm not driving around Boulder County. Just not a topper, yeah. just a, yeah, yeah, a, a black tarp thing over, yeah, the, yeah, over the top, whatever you call it, whatever you call it, a, a bed topper. I don't know what it is. So I startled him because I I think it was maybe the shock of the truck, but also I was like sort of blocking the whole driveway. Like it's only I'm telling you, one lane in, one lane out. So he gives me this really weird look, and I was just like, and so I just kind of like I didn't I wasn't confrontational. I was just like. I was like, "Is everything okay? Yeah. You know, are you you? Am I doing anything wrong?" And he's like, "No, he's just no, no, no." I just I think he was literally you know confused or whatever. And then I started to get a feel for his personality, and his personality, I'm telling you, was was if anybody listens to Bill Burr, the comedian, it was like very East Coast. He he sounded like he's from Boston. I ended up finding out he's from Pennsylvania. Uh, but this is really like super, super, super fast talker. Yeah. You know, I'm talking fast right now. This guy was two times my speed, right? Wow. It was incredible. So that's the pace I kept in the meeting. Yeah. And I could, and then I started to get the feel of like, this guy wants numbers. He wants to know what this is going to cost. And if I can deliver all of those things and keep up with the speed, I think I'll just sell them on, I'll just sell them at the meeting. Yeah. I, you know, I like, I, I, yes, the proposal is going to come afterwards. But I, I will just sell them in the meeting. Yep. So I had my little proposal, my little mock proposal book there, which yeah. has been working beautifully, by the way. It just keeps working consistently. Um, and so, you know, we get through the meeting. He's telling me all these things. I'm writing stuff down or whatever. We sit down and I'm, he, we're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. His wife is like, you can tell, like, she's just kind of her. She's just spinning. 
Like she's like, holy cow, these guys are going too fast. Yeah. And he goes, well, what's it's going to cost? And I tell him what it's going to cost. And he goes, I like this guy. I like, I like this guy. This, that's what I wanted to hear. And he goes, blah, 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 blah. that's what I wanted to hear, Becky. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Her name isn't Becky. But you know, he just yeah. kept going like that. So uh, remember, uh, so that's my tip for this week of like with, with meeting with clients. You know, then later on in the day, I met with the complete opposite kind of couple. <laughs> <laughs> it was very low key. Uh, it was just very, very mellow and you could tell they were, they didn't see this guy and his wife too. They also knew exactly what they wanted. Right. And I mean, literally what they wanted. They just wanted somebody to come in with confidence and execute. And I could get that. These other, the other couple wanted to, they wanted their hands held a little bit more and I'm totally okay with that. Yep. So I had to, so like, understand, like you, you need to go into these meetings and really feel just kind of, if in the first couple minutes you can feel out the personality and adapt to that and relate to that yeah. and, and spoon feed them what they want. If you can do all of those things, you, you'll be successful. And the last thing is I've been insanely busy. You've been insanely busy. Some days we wear four different hats. We'll go to see you. We're yeah. professors. We'll come back here. We're architects. Then maybe both of us have to go to job sites. We're contractors. Then we come back and we're architects. Then, dude, I've been a low paid intern on Thursday. Then he's been an intern, and then, uh, and then exactly. Plus, you're on a board. I'm on a bunch of boards. Yeah. Then we're podcasters. All of these things, right? How do we keep up with it? Number one, we schedule everything. Number two, I would highly recommend everybody tries out Yesware. So I don't ah, know if you've done yeah. this. Oh yeah, I have templates templates exactly mm. that's exactly where i'm going with this is so so um i was doing a million things this morning before i came into the office and i need i had a 10 a.m meeting that i had to get to i was a little bit late but in order for me but i also had those two clients that i met yesterday get those i need to get those uh get those proposals, proposals out got to get them out um because our we always deliver within 24 hours Thank God I had the email template set up. I did this last week finally. Is I set up an email template for, for sending out a proposal. Sending out a proposal. Send it to me. I will. And, and I'm actually I'm actually going to read it if it's okay. Yeah, sure. You're okay I'm with okay. that? This is inside the firm. We, we tell people. This is America. We tell people stuff. So it's and I'll, I'll be and I'll be upfront too. Obviously that like I tweak this, it, you know. But it's a yeah. but it's a great just structure. So I'll probably add or tweak it ten to fifteen percent from here. Um, so you, you, I said you set up these these email templates with Yesware. It's great. Plus you can track your emails. I think we've talked about it. I would mm-hmm. actually like to go after these guys for a sponsor. I think they'd be great for the podcast. Oh Yesware, yeah. yeah. So Alex found these guys. Uh, so so you can set up the. So basically, I, I titled my template. It's called Design Proposal. Then the email subject says Design Proposal. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Creative, and then and then the the it says who is the client, and then I say, great to meet you earlier this week. Per our conversation and meeting, I have put together a design proposal for your review. Please find it attached to this email. If upon review you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them via email or phone call during business hours. Thank you for the opportunity to be your architect of choice. I look forward to working with you in the nearest future. Cheers. And then from there, obviously the things I change are the subject. I'll maybe add like a hyphen and then their address. Yes, or, or their or name, whatever their you call name. It. Yep, Johnson Residence. Res- yep, um, and then who's the client? I just change it to them, and then and then within the sentences, depending on when I met them, that might tweak yep. a little bit. Um, and then I also like for these two clients, I recommended two separate different contractors, so I added that paragraph in, right? Because that's unique. Because I'm trying to find contractors that are unique. And perfect for their project, yep. right? Uh, so, highly recommend uh, check out and try it out. Yesware. We are not sponsored by them, but hopefully soon we will be. You know what I did? That I patted myself on the back. Look for. at you! Look so, at you! First, pat yourself on the back for making this template. Email it to me while I'm talking right okay. now, so that I have it, so I can put it in. But I got an inquiry, uh, a referral from that contractor that I've been talking about. Yep. Um, talk to them. <laughs> what was great was you know I emailed them and. Asked them a, a bunch of questions. They gave me the address, what they wanted, all that. Guess what the first thing I did was? What'd you do? Because it's in Denver. What'd you do? Right? And I'm, you know, okay, I got to bid this thing. Well, is this going to be addition? How close are the property lines? What, you know, zoning are we in? I went to my intake form and I filled out the stupid intake form. Oh. I was like, I was like guys, oh you'll be God. so happy when, 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 if and when we get this project, when I could pass it off and you could go look and all the information's there, not just half can bobbled all over the place and you barely know what's going on. And you're like, why do I even work for these guys? <laughs> <laughs> seems like a, seems like a shit yeah. show. So put in the zoning, put in the setbacks, put in the hype, be like, Oh, 
you want a second floor edition. You can do a second floor Was this floor part edition. of your intern work? What? Was a oh, intern. No, can I tell you what I did for my intern work? <laughs> yeah. What so, are you talking about? So after school yesterday, uh-huh. uh, after teaching, I, I printed out flyers. Did you ever see them? You, I, I think I gave them to, for you to have your... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah for the on. development. Yep. yep. So then I was watching basketball a couple nights ago, folding all the flyers, and then I, st- <laughs> I stopped by. I didn't have enough. Um, a place in Gun Barrel that has a lot of tech people, a lot of like a tech center. Started putting in my headphones, listening to Jocko. Putting flyers and windshields. Oh, what? Look at this guy. <laughs> Every Tuesday Canvasing. and Thursday, I'm going to go to Lockheed Martin next. I'm going to go to, uh, what's another one? I don't know, all these IBM, areas. these huge these huge corporations yep. that are in our, and our just county. Just put in podcasts and be a little flyer guy. I love it. Walk around. I love it so much. He's going to get he's gonna get outside. He's going to clear his lungs out. Yeah. And he's not going to be sick anymore. Yeah. There you go, Al. Al Gore. So speaking of just great feelings and being awesome, should we listen to Nick Freed? I miss Nick with Nick Reads. Yeah. Here we go. Hello, best friends. I hope you all had a great week this week. A reading. Build as if you can afford to throw it away, and you'll build smaller, better, and more meaningfully. Small is the new luxury. For decades after World War II, we indulged the luxury of throwaway places, but discovered they were no luxury at all, but lowered our spirits at every turn. Build as if you only had a wheelbarrow, and you'll preserve much more of the character of the land and streams, and also many of the trees. Your lots will be more valuable and far less boring in the early years, then land scraped flat as per standard engineering practice. Build as if you only had the sun to warm and breezes to cool. Entice yourself outside with great outdoor rooms to condition yourselves to the local environment so you can throw open the windows on most days. On the most extreme days, use small but highly efficient cooling equipment a living tradition by steve and wanda muzan toodles well that is a timely one so i follow the wall street journal because i think they do great articles uh and i'm in, i'm into economics right and so was al mm-hmm. there was an article that came out today so this is so timely nick uh is that it the title is a growing problem in real estate too many big houses. Ah, I, I Baby boomers and retirees built large, elaborate dream houses across the Sun Belt, only to find that few people want to buy them. So now we're sitting here. Mm. We're now we're sitting here with, and we and we heard this in high in college all day long. And there there was there is there's always a half. Tr- you know, nothing is one hundred percent true. Uh, so there's always like a gray gray areas, right? But like. The hate for suburbia and the hate for these McMansions, right? But it's true. Like, now look. Now we're going to pay the price for these giant, giant things with wasted space and wasted money and everything that nobody wants. Because we, now the demographics are changing, right? Small is sexy. Well, what's interesting, too, about that is there was a time. It was probably last summer or a little bit before that where I got all these inquiries about finishing people's basements. And they'd have like 1,500 square foot on the main level. They'd have a full upper floor. And they'd ha- have nothing in the in the bottom, right? And I understand, like, I want a man cave. I want a, a gym and a place to stick my parents, you know, especially if it's a walkout, right? But these places were so big. They're like, yeah, we're thinking about adding two to three bedrooms, you know, um, for resale value. I'm like, here, <laughs> here you have a five-bedroom house. You don't need an eight-bedroom house. Resale value. Like, you don't need an eight-bedroom house. Like, may, I, I'm, some families do. Some families do. So I'm not talking about that. But this isn't – do you remember that um, my parents' generations, they had – my dad has, like, seven brothers. Our neighbor, who was, you know, our parents' aide, had, like, seven, seven brothers. There's only four How many brothers five? do you have? One. Me? I got, Luke Psycho. I, got, I know. I got two, but – Oh yeah, but, but <laughs> I mean, you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah. we don't have these seven seven bedrooms, right? And there was an article, right? There was an article. I can't remember. I don't even know who shared it yesterday that I was reading. That it was an awesome. There was this awesome map, and there's only five. There's only like five states where families are now having uh, two plus kids per family. 
Other than that, everybody else is below the two two mark. I think in Colorado we're at one point six or something. Like that. I can't remember who shared it. It's an awesome graphic. It all it's kind of shocking because it's like. See, that kind of proves we need immigrants. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. The population boost means economic boost. Exactly. If you have a dwindling, what are we going to end? We're going to end up like Finland where they're paying people to have kids. Have you heard about this? Oh, no. This is a really crazy one. So, like, I think it's Finland. It's, it's one of the Danish countries where so they have this dwindling uh, localized population. So the government has decided that if you have, if you're in Finland, if you, if you have four or more, if you have wow. up to four kids, you are income tax free for life. You don't have to pay for income taxes. I told my wife, like, are you sure, you, are you sure we don't want to move to Finland? <laughs> we might. We might. We might. What I'm saying, to get back a little bit on subject, is, man, don't you feel like people need to plan their basements better? They just take they just take the upper floor and be like, oh, we'll just go down and then uh, we'll just uh, maybe use that later. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. Exactly. Plan exactly. Exactly. Can it's, we plan now? And, oh, yeah, it drives me nuts. You the know? reason why I'm torn, though, is because, I don't know if you did. Did you play Shinny? Yes. Yeah, so basements where Shinny yep. rinks. And Shinny is mini hockey with mini sticks in the basement with the tennis ball. Mm-hmm. So you'd put up a couple nets there and just go to town. Do your thing. Yeah, yeah I get your torn. You you have this like uh, you have this nostalgic Al Gore to you all the time. You know, yeah. Growing up in Minnesota, this yeah. is what we did. We're in the basement. Why isn't there lakes in Colorado? Because it's not Minnesota, Al. Oh. <laughs> there are lakes. They're just private. It's yeah. yeah. They certainly are. They certainly are. You got to get over it, but, you know. You do. All right. Um, let's bring in the boys for ARE Jeopardy. All right, so we have a new guest today. Ross is in the building. Um, he's he's been a substitute. I think you're permanent now. He's and permanent. I, yep, he crushed it before, so we'll we'll see what happens. Jackson is betting on winning. I gave him the answers. We'll see if he can remember. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> All right, according to that our means he has to pay for lunch. Th- yeah, <laughs> R three ten one. Point one minimum openings. This is IRC, not IBC. Minimum opening area shall have a net clear opening of not less than. These are windows, guys. A five point one square feet. B five point two square feet. C three point seven square feet. D five point seven square feet. Minimum opening for windows. That's all you need to know. Egress windows. Yep. Everybody got the answers? Okay, what do we got? D, 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 B, D, it is D. So we got... No, what is so funny is on the first floor, that might be true, and that was going to be my second question, but then I was looking in 2018, and I couldn't find it, so I think they maybe took it away. So that's just something to look into. Um, <clears throat> so that still may be true or not. They might have moved it. I don't know. I don't know why they do that. But um, okay, question two. This is uh, window wells. Uh, So this is in basements. Should have a minimum horizontal area of A, nine square feet, B, six square feet, C, three square feet, D, 12 square feet. So you're making a window well for people to escape. Should it be A, nine square feet, B, six square feet, C, three square feet, or D, 12 square feet? Do, do, do. A, 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 A. You guys are all correct. Nine square feet. Look at look at you guys. Look Good you job, guys. guys. Yeah. All right. You're not going to get these ones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. So, <clears throat> number three. You are on a site visit and observe that vertical H channels being installed between the 24-inch panels of the shaft liners are not accessible to the installers because they align with the framing members. This condition doesn't allow for them to install the angle clips at each channel. What should you recommend in your field report? A. Remove the framing members so that the clips can be installed. B. Redo the entire shaft liner configuration so that the channels are not coincident with the framing members. C. Redo all of the framing configurations so that the so that the channels are not coincident with the framing members. D. Do nothing and claim a field hardship to the inspector. Do you need me to repeat that long one? Just the answers? Okay. A, remove the framing members so that the clips can be installed. B, redo the entire shaft liner configuration so that the channels are not coincident with the framing members. C, redo all of the framing configurations so that the channels are not coincident with the framing members. D, do nothing and claim a field hardship to the inspector. Do, 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 do. We have, Jason, are you ready? 
A B A B A. Correct B- answer is A. So we had Ross Gresh Jackson. <laughs> and know what's so funny is that you said that they want to get it. I told them this answer in the midweek. Oh, like, hilarious. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, well, the tricky part about the answer A is that I didn't say then you reinstall the framing members. And so I, I, I omitted that on purpose because I felt like it would have been too easy, and I think it would, I think it would have been. Uh, but that, that's, that's what's going to happen in the field, just so you guys know. And uh, so then, just a quick story, is then, so they, this is what happened on one of our buildings. You'll see it out there today. It's all good. It is, it is what it is, right? Then on the second building, I go, I f- took that framing crew, which is a different framing crew, and I showed them that one, and I go, here's how you guys can avoid this. Offset it when you start. They didn't. And it just is what it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, boss, great idea. We're not gonna do that at all. Uh, oh, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you a story about the. We gotta talk about the width of these, the space we're providing too. Four inches is still not enough. Four and a quarter is. The the H channels make it thicker. So we'll show you in the field. <sighs> well, everyone should know that because we've been designing buildings with four inch spacing and probably a hundred buildings like that. Yeah. 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 Okay, number four. What what do we got? Who, who's leading? One person's leading. No, we two. got three. We got, we, a, got we got a three-way Ross, tie for three. Gresh and Jackson. So. All right. Number four. You are on another site visit and observe that the framers have interrupted the sheathing with non-structural framing members. What should you recommend in your field report? A. Contact the structural engineer and have him work on a solution to compensate for the interruption. B. Recommend the framers add more nails. C, recommend that the framers remove the non-structural frame members and make the sheathing continuous again. D, recommend additional sheathing on the interior of the walls to compensate for the interrupted sheathing on the exterior. Read Mm. read them again. Mm. uh, So A, contact the structural engineer and have him work on a solution to compensate for the interruption. B, Recommend the framers add more nails. C. Recommend that the framers remove the non-structural framing members and make the sheathing continuous again. D. Recommend additional sheathing on the interior of the walls to compensate for the interrupted sheathing on the exterior. We've got these answers. We got C, C, D, C, and C. The correct answer is C. So, we have a tie, and if this was... So, everyone should know, while Lance is thinking of another question, everyone should know that these questions are based off of real-world experience and the actual code. If these were ARE questions, they'd probably say, write it down in a field report, don't say anything, and maybe it'll come up later. (laughs) And that would probably be the right answer. Just joking with you, NCARB. All right. This is the speed round. Ready? A typical TJI 210 thickness, sorry, width is. Ross has two and three sixteenths. You're just. No, no, no. You write it down. Two and seven sixteenths. Is that what you said? Two and five sixteenths. What do you got? Nothing. All right, that's a bonk. We're not. That's no. Nobody got it. Okay. Okay. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so Jackson, <laughs> you just write down the answer and hold, hold it up. It's two Speed and one sixteenth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do uh, um, a mechanical room in the basement. If it's under how many square feet, you don't need gypsum or sprinklers. Sprinklers. 50, 20, no, neither are right. We could do the... I, I got one. The closest. I, we could do the closest or we could go... One more, one more. One okay. more. A typical... Okay, ready? You are correct. It's 80, 80 square feet. What is the, what is the typical width for a TJI 360? This one's tricky. Yeah, three and one sixteenths. We got three and a half... So those two were tied. Yeah. What? Those two were tied. These two. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that, it, neither it, of them got. Mark it right. Two and seven sixteen. Close. What do you got? Two and five sixteenths is it? Yep. It's wow. tricky. I actually, I actually had to double check myself on the site this week. Okay. To see where it's at. I have the tiebreaker. Okay. Here's this the tiebreaker. This is going to be whoever's closest between these two. You will know the answer because you wrote this. 
Okay, so so you have to judge whoever's quickest, well, whoever's closest or quickest if they get it spot on. Max square feet a bathroom can be without being sprinklered. Is that what that says? In, what? It, in, what? in a sprinklered building in I, IBC. So a bathroom doesn't have to be sprinklered if it's under so many square feet. So max square feet it can be. That's interesting. There. there. What is it? Ah, Jackson wins. Woo! Congratulations, yeah. Good job. So th- he <laughs> Jackson <laughs> won. First you, time. Everyone can be winners if you go to Amazon and buy our book, The Creativity Code. You'll like it. Um, if you <laughs> want to learn Revit, go to RevitRocketShip.com. That one's more expensive because it's way more awesome. It gives you a lot of tools, templates, training. Um, if you don't like it, money back guaranteed. So go to RevitRocketShip.com and you can get even more of us. That's all we got this week. We'll see, we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.